All right. Welcome back. Here we go. Why type when I can talk? All right, folks, you ready? We're going to do some cable work this week. And by popular request, we're going to also do some, uh, some solder work as well. I'm going to go over some tips for good, clean solder joints, tell you about some things you're going to need, uh, how to make some cables, how to test your cables, and some general guidelines about what things would be best for cable soldering in general. So uh, you ready? I think you're all ready. Let's change this guy a little. All right. So we're gonna start today, not with this. We might come back to this if there's time. Um, but in my head, there's enough time to do that. Um, we're gonna start with this one. There's so much to do here. So much on the desk. All right. Start there. So I'll just start by explaining this and, and then we'll get into some solder tips as well. Um, up here I have some Nelly asks, is the soldering iron fired up? It absolutely is. It's had a, it's had a, a great 20 minute uh, warm up. Uh, we got some sandpaper here and some scrubby. This is important because even when you buy new parts, you never really know how long they've been sitting. And that is not going to solder perfectly on the first go. So I'm going to Give it a scrub with my, did I say green scrubby? This is blue scrubby, of course, but kind of the same idea. So this scrubby here, I'll come down here so it's a little easier to, to see. In fact, I might cut a little. Casey already has some uh, some soldiers on the screen. That is, uh, I think, a weekly recurring theme. Soldiering, sold, soldiering. Okay, I'm gonna use the back of a just a little wood pin here to get a good scrub on that. All right, already getting a. Starting to get a little more shiny. Already better. You can see how much just kind of corrosion has happened. I think I've, I probably had this for not six months. I think I ordered this part about six months ago. So um, I don't do this with every single part. If it's a pretty shiny joint, uh, I don't usually give it too much trouble. Uh, the sandpaper, kind of for the same thing. I might sometimes give a a once over. This is 600 grit sandpaper. It doesn't take much. Just once once on each side. Give it a little something gentle on the back. You don't want to go uh, scrubbing the plating off because if there's a, a plating on there, you're gonna want that. So I'll give this a quick. How was everybody's week? Nice and shiny. Great, that's gonna be great to solder. This is pre-tinned. I actually pulled this from an older cable that I had, uh, which is a great way to get connectors if you if you have an old bad cable. They often have switchcraft connectors or empanol, sometimes no-trick cable, uh, no-trick connectors, and some usually some pretty bad cabling. That's the the expensive part of a long cable would be, you know. 20 feet of cable. Um, 
So this guy's ready. Josh says his wife Alden and he have had some had a great week. Good to hear it. Glad to hear it. It's been a pretty weird couple weeks uh, around the globe. Okay. This is going to be a high Z unbalanced tip sleeve connection. So here's what we've got. We're going to have a connector on each side. That's going to be the slip sleeve. That's the tip. TS. Um, unbalanced because there's only one hot connection going from tip to tip. And that differs from others, such as a balanced connection, where it would have a hot or a cold, as well as a ground. You'll see the ground is common on both connections. So this is a balanced connection, two connectors here, unbalanced. One hot connection. So we're going to make kind of a short, I think this is about a eight foot guitar cable, uh, maybe 10 foot. We have our ground, which is one wire. I'll show you in a second. And then we have, uh, when we strip this off, we have this little black conductive insulated layer. And that needs to come off because that will cause trouble if we don't take it off. So let's get that out of there. I'm gonna go right back up to the ground cable. I use an X-Acto blade for that. I'm very careful with my X-Acto. I have years of, of uh, using X-Acto. So if you don't have a lot of experience using X-Acto, Use what you're comfortable with. If you have a pair of um, wire strippers or maybe uh, another, yeah, I guess wire strippers. Wire stripper in Exacto is about the only thing I've ever used. So here is that conductive layer. It's designed to sit underneath the uh, ground cable, shield cable. Uh, this is part of the shield of the cable. So anything that this cable misses this shield picks up uh, as far as radiation or um, interference would go. So it's just a thin, it's, it, you can see that it's pretty rubbery and there's a lot of, uh, I believe, carbon in there that would make it conductive. So conductive layer in there that has to come off and then we're going to strip a little more of this away. So tip sleeve cabling 101. Essentially, we're going to solder the shield ground, that's this big one, to this sleeve connector. And then this is going to sit in here like this. So we need to open up this inner conductor to make it long enough to hook around this little, there's a little hole in here that I'll, I'll get to in a second. But really, it has to hook through there. So I'm going to say like eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. So let me do the other side first, and it'll it'll clarify some things. Okay. So as I was saying, we're going to look for our length. All right. So give it a quarter inch to there. And then we don't want to cut any further back than here. Otherwise, this clamp, this is a clamp on the end. This clamp won't have anywhere to clamp. We don't want it to clamp directly on the shield. We want it to clamp on the cable. That's called strain relief. And strain relief is very important in a cable. You'll see it on all kinds of cables. Um, another example of strain relief, maybe a, a more obvious example of strain relief is this rubbery connector or this rubbery uh, boot here. 
So as that turns or pulls, it gives varying amounts of strain relief so that your cable doesn't kink and cut off right at the tip where it would connect here. Strain relief, important. Okay, so find our amount. Looks like we want about, let's find out exactly how much for that one. For that cable we're looking at about, well, almost an inch, about seven eighths of an inch that we're gonna strip off there. So like I said, if you have some good uh, cutters, some, some good uh, wire strippers, absolutely use those. I've been doing this for a long time. And the thing that I don't like about wire strippers that you could also um, possibly do here is you don't want to nick that wire because every little tiny wire you nick in a connection is going to mean failure at some point down the road. So I go around. You can see that I gave it a good carve all the way around. And then I, right at the very tip, where everything's gonna kind of be uh, cut off and melted anyway. I'm gonna pull from there. And that's how I generally strip most um, coaxial wire like this. This is called coaxial wire or multiple conductor wires. So here we are. That's our outer layer. That's our braid. This is a, a very high braid. I think this is like a 95 or 98% um, braid. This is good quality cable. I'm going to, with a little toothpick or wood pick, if you're not into teeth, I have a better one here. This is the back end of a um, Q-tip applicator type thing, cotton swab applicator. If you're not into cotton swab branding. Okay, a little tricky out here. Grab a few pins at a time, or excuse me, a few strands at a time. I just try to stick with one side and let's see if I can zoom this in. Yeah, here we go. My, I think this one's too sharp. Go back to the toothpick. It seems to be working a little better. So the idea here also is you don't want to rip any of these hairs too much. Um, some of these are going to get cut off, but generally they should mostly stay intact. If you make a cut and you suddenly get like a ton of fray little bits like these, no big deal. But if half your fray comes off, you're gonna to wanna to cut back another inch and start over. So now here's a trick that I'll show you that I learned from working on old uh, tape gear from the 50s, tube gear, tape gear. Um, basically what old techs would do when building gear would separate these strands into two parts and tie off one part together, one half, and then the second half, making sure there are no strays. And we're going to wrap these together. Barbie says, hi, Frank. Hey, Barbie, welcome. Welcome to the live stream. All right. So that's ready to solder. I'm gonna give that a quick solder and then I'm gonna trim off that little excess. That way, when we solder this to the ground conductor, it's gonna solder very quickly and it won't be uh, too unwieldy to solder. So tape this down. Sometimes I'll tape work to a table to keep it from moving. All right, 
So a bit of soldering technique here. I have a wet sponge here, uh, wet or damp, and a hot iron here. So every time you, I take this out, you'll see me gently wipe it on the sponge. That's called shocking the tip. And what it leaves you with is a, here I go, leaves you with a shiny tip with nothing on it. So I'm going to then apply heat to both parts of the joint and then lift it off. So not more than a few seconds. If it needs to touch up on the other side, we'll spin it over. It looks pretty close, but I think you could use just a hair more. And cable always gives you a hard time. It never wants to sit. So apply heat, apply a little solder, not too much. Take it off. That's our touch up. Joanna's back. Welcome, Joanna. Soldering today. Now, this little bit here is going to come off. So I've got some clippers. Make sure I don't clip anything else. Clip it right there. Now we have a small lead that's not too unwieldy. And looks like we're in good length. Kung Fu, Kung Fu Crime Wave, Luke Kelly says, no shout out for me. Come on, Frank. Uh, welcome, Luke. I think this is your first time here. Other people who have been here have been getting shout outs. So welcome. Tiger is in the house and says, first. Okay. Welcome, Tiger. Now, like I said, we're going to remove this conductive layer just gently without too much pressure. And see that? It comes right off. Now, this is another insulated layer. We need to take off about a quarter inch of that. And it's going to go in there like that. So. About a quarter of an inch. Now we don't want to go too long with this. Again, I'm just going to gently rotate under the blade. If it's too long, the if the uh, inner conductor is too long, you'll have a connection that isn't very strong. I'm going to twist this as I pull it off so that there are no stray wires. I usually do it just very quickly, but so no, here we have. No stray wires, nice, decent lead here. And our length looks pretty good. Okay. Let's tape this down. Uh, another trick that I like to do is I use an old pedal that I, I have had for a long time. It just has these quarter inch jacks in it. And in order to solder my quarter inch plugs, I just plug it in, set that down like that. I'm gonna open up this hole real quick. an old resistor here that I can open it up with.
plenty of solder on there. I think I can just go straight in. Okay. I'm going to start with inner conductor and I'll zoom in a bit so you can see it. I'm going to try and keep the shield ground toward the bottom because that's where it's going to end up anyway. Heat this up right in through the hole and I'm going to make sure we're set right. I'll add a tiny bit of extra solder here just to make sure there's enough flux to get everything going. And I often like to go under the bottom to make sure that that is flat with no stray wires. So here we have the first solder joint. No strays, no conductive layer. And then when I close this, ooh, it's just a teeny bit. It's a teeny bit long, that's okay. Then we're going to solder in our shield and ground. <laughs> Luke says, has everyone seen Beautiful Burning Candle? Beautiful Burning Candle is a popular video, Luke. All right. Um, I'm going to trim a bit of this because we don't need anywhere near that amount. Plenty. So that's going to sit flat. It's going to go back in here. Now here's the tricky part. Getting this to sit in the right direction. So I'm going to tape this end down to make sure it doesn't move. Okay. I shock my iron, grab my solder, find a convenient in. I'm going to press the wire down and I'm going to apply solder as the joint heats up, if I can get in there. That should be all it needs. Okay. After a few seconds, it won't be too hot. Let that cool, and then we'll close up our strain relief. And since this is the first side of the, the cable, we don't need to put our, um, our casing on yet. Pliers for our strain relief. I'm gonna make sure this is up just far enough. This can come down a little. This goes up. And we close the strain relief. Ideally, you want this to be a little tighter in there, a little more, a little more rubber under there. We'll get the set, we'll get the other side a little better. Okay, so that's side one. Here's what we've got. And if you see any stray wires, knock them back or cut them out. I see the tiniest little one, but I don't think there's much to do here. Okay, great. Now, as I was saying, here's where you wanna make sure you put your case on. Inside each casing is a little insulated piece. It's going to go on first. It 
and then the case. So that goes up, this tightens up, and that's side A. Side B. So we did the tip, we did the sleeve, there's the strain relief. Here's side B. Most important part about side B, put this stuff on first. Otherwise, you'll be unsoldering your cable and putting it back on. Luke asks, can we leave the string relief release open? Uh, I wouldn't. You will end up resoldering that cable in short time. So in this case, the casing goes on first. The insulator goes on next. And then we're going to solder this. We're going to find how much we need to solder, how, how much to trim, how much to solder. We're going to make sure we have plenty of strain relief on this side. To be honest, I'll go back and re-solder that first one because I think I had pre-showed jitters. And I made it too long. Unbelievable. Okay. We need about a quarter of an inch, but I'm gonna go a little longer. That should be plenty. Again, under the blade. So before I do anything else, I'm going to solder up my two my two points. Uh, music tonight again. I want to thank Casey Holford for sending in some music that he owns the copyright to because he wrote it and sent it to me to improve the production value of these videos. And uh, he says, Yo, Frank, what mic are you using for your audio today? This is um, an Altec Lansing. Let me check. Ah, AKG. This is an AKG earbud mic, and I've actually found that these lap mics uh, are pretty solid for the human voice. Okay. Wrap this one around that one, tape it down, or use a third hand, whatever you've got nearby. Let's get this a little closer. Apply heat, apply solder, touch up from the back side if necessary. That should get it all the way through. That'll help the solder work through both sides. All right. This is a uh, this is a Frank tune coming up. Again, this is one of the how it's made inspired tunes that I wrote for one of my videos. All right. I'm gonna pull this off. So. Once I get this scored, sometimes if you didn't get it quite deep enough, give it a turn with a pair of pliers, or go back and rescore it. You just want, don't want to go so deep that you nick the wires. That's the worst case scenario, or I guess worst case scenario would be cutting yourself but uh next to worst case scenario you nick those wires all right give it a couple twists that should pop right off a tiny twist as you come off plenty of lead this desk is going to be a mess soon so trim this first because I know there's plenty so one other idea uh, one reason that I trim these and um, 
wrap one side is to make sure that there's not really enough length to touch each other. So at no point is there going to be um, a stray wire coming up to close that circuit. So here we are. Got our quarter inch jack holder. Not a great deal for this one. Mem is in the house as well. Mem asks, is Frank anti-stripper? That is wire stripper. And uh, you know, I've owned wire strippers that uh, I felt, I've never owned a great pair of wire strippers. I would love to try a pair of thermal strippers, which I think is a super pro way to strip wires. So this is gonna be a little too long. I'm gonna trim off just a hair. Um, before I go any further. So not ever shelling out the two to $400 for a pair of thermal wire strippers. I don't have a great informed opinion about most strippers, uh, but I have used the cheap flat strippers that kind of look like this and they nick your wires. Like you could, you could strip wires with this or, or the big flat ones. But in my experience, they'll nick a few wires, and that's not an ideal scenario for cable making. So another way to get this through is you could um, tin the wire first, but I think I think we can get it all in there. Ooh, it's giving me some trouble. In fact, I'm going to pull this out just a, just a hair. All right, there we are. Now I'm gonna hook this back and I wanna leave enough room on each side for a little solder to do its thing. So flatten that, it's kinda of hooked. Did I leave enough? All right, take my wire down. Uh, making wires is, or making uh, cables can be pretty annoying because cables are relatively unwieldy. They have a memory and that memory will cause you pain, not the cable. Okay, again, shock your iron, apply heat to both the wire and the connector at once, and then add solder. So I'm gonna go from one side to start, add solder, and then I'll go to the back side and touch up the joint. And that should be enough to give a great solder joint that is strong, shiny, and flexible without melting through all of your insulation. So, okay. Not too much solder on there. Ooh, a couple little frays. I definitely have pre-show jitters. Mid-show jitters? cable, shock my iron, apply heat to both, now I won't be able to get to the back side 
of that to touch it up, but I get one solid push. Okay, let's see what we've got. Ooh, a little janky on this one. All right, I'm gonna resolder it. Take it all the way off. And now we'll just say that I, I just tinned those parts, that's all. Now we have two nicely tinned parts. I'm going to trim a little more. And then I'm gonna close my strain relief first. I don't always close strain relief first. But when I do, I use pliers. Mem says virtual stage fright. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, let's try this again. side is a little too long. Okay, that'll give us a good solder joint. Nelly says, Mem and Frank always start trouble. Uh, I mean, I define trouble, I guess. A little heat, little solder, a good push. That's better. I mean, we're not bartending tonight, so I don't know what trouble we could start. He says, what's the benefit of having two shield joints for the sleeve? Um, how do you mean, Casey? Uh, what, what's, the other, what's the other shield joint? Okay. This is real time, and in, in real time, in real frank time, I would go back and Resolder this because I did not give enough room for the strain relief. Don't do that. Okay. Give that a little push. This will go up. Oh, splitting the shield in two. Uh, so splitting the shield in two really has the benefit of making it easy to solder. If you've ever tried to solder a big thick braid of wire. I mean, this isn't super thick, but um, if you've ever tried to solder like an enormous thick conglomeration of wire, it's it takes a lot of heat and it takes a lot of solder and it takes a lot of space. So anytime you can uh, trim down any of those three things, uh, it'll make your soldering and your life easier. All right, that's number one. Why don't we work on, let me get this coiled up. Let's test it, test our work. Go to the resistance mode on your multimeter and I'm going to grab the tip and press the shield and that zero should turn into a different zero. Oh, wrong side, excuse me. We're testing from tip to tip because that's what we want to check the conductivity of. So 
So we just want that to be on the tip. And this one to be on the tip. And that zero should turn into another. Yeah, basically zero. So now the other test is if you touch the shield, does anything happen? And no, nothing happens. That's great. Tip. Good, that's conductivity. Shield. No conductivity. Great. That cable works. I can test the shield to shield. And conductive. It works. Let's see, already some tip jokes going on out there. I fully expected that. No sleeve jokes? Come on. All right. Uh, let's do an XLR cable. We might run out of time. Fixed. I need my fixed stamp. I don't. I still don't have a fixed stamp. Fixed. That's one. We're going to do a balanced XLR. Let's get this a little higher for us. So now it's going to be a nice long cable. And I've got a slightly different method for this. Kung Fu Luke saying, uh, you know my stance on string relief. I think I do. I think you're for it. Here's what we're doing. XLR cable, three pins, two conductors, one ground and shield. We're gonna start with male connector. So it's good practice to just put the boot on, put on the boot. All right, I will put that on, but I think it'll fall off. So we'll set that aside for now. Casing. Josh says that Harlow just ran into the room to say hi to Frank and Casey. Hey, Harlow, welcome back. Okay. We might need to get a little higher here. Okay, so here's how I like to solder XLR connectors. I use an old mic stand and an old opposite connector. So I have a male here that I'm soldering, I have a female here. I would say don't use this on uh, a mic cable that you care about. See, this is just the end. And I think this is an old connector that I haven't, that I cut out of a piece, uh, out of an old cable. Don't attach this to a cable you care about because the heat could um, destroy the other connections. And it'll also uh, sink away some of the heat as a heat sink would. So we're gonna put this in here for now. I'm gonna set it aside. And this is how it looks facing you. Pin one pin two, pin three. So pin three is always gonna be male, or excuse me, pin three is always gonna be cold, pin two is going to be hot, and pin one is gonna be shield, which will be that side. Uh, this will be backward from this, because this is front facing. Okay, back to work. This one poses a slightly different challenge. 
than the other ones because we need to know how much cable. This uh, is where XLR cabling gets a little tricky. We don't want too much, again, only need like maybe half of an inch, three quarters of an inch. Trim this off. And this is gonna be a quad core cable. And I'll ex explain quad core in a second. Casey says, what is the possible purpose of a balanced XLR to an unbalanced tip sleeve connector? And um, so sometimes when you're connecting balanced gear to unbalanced gear, uh, you need a connector usually with an XLR or a three, uh, a balanced three conductor connection. For example, that would be this, hot and cold. In this case, you still only have one hot. And in another case, you have uh, pin three or the cold side going to ground. You could do this either way. It depends on the device. Um, you don't have to hook up the cold. Um, sometimes people do, though, to keep um, the, well, I guess the phasing would be on a uh, TS to TS. So it's not necessary to hook up the cold, but I generally do. All right, we've got our shield here. Again, heavy duty braid. Using a toothpick. So you, you gotta just take a few strands at a time. Uh, earlier, Luke mentioned listening to or watching how it's made in for three hours in Nevada. Was that um, in Searchlight, Luke? Do you remember? Was that the Searchlight night? Okay. A little different here. We've got some packing between the, the conductors here, which is cotton and like a tissue. So that's pretty common in two conductor cabling. It keeps the uh, noise down of the cable. So I'm gonna cut that out. Okay. And again, I'm going to separate my shield. Into two. making sure there are no fray wires or stray wires anywhere. Twist them together. And then I try to keep the, the smaller one. For my soldering purposes. Heat on one side, touch up the back side. It'll go all the way through. Solid joint, electrically sound. I'm gonna clip off the fat one. Okay.
I'll show you another trick for uh, thermally stripping wires. Mem, this one's for you. Still there, Mem? Even if you come back, maybe in like an hour, I'll still be doing this uh, stripping, probably on this side. Okay. strip a wire by heating it up on one side Mem says no no gone all right so heat heat So this, especially on these inner conductors, um, keeps from keeps the wiring from fraying. Set those to one side. Get that other side. This particular cable does have a really strong internal Teflon coating in my, there we are. My iron could be just a little hotter. So now this is quad core balanced cable. So that means there are, or star, star quad as it's called. I, I call it quad core, like I'm, uh, I'm buying a computer in 1998 uh, or 2000. When did quad core computers come out? Um, or quad core CPUs. So this is really just a two conductor pair because each side is going to be tied together. And then asks, is thermal, strip, is thermal stripping just a fancy way to say melting plastic? Uh, yeah, I guess sort of. So let me actually, I'll show you one other trick. Okay, so let's get back to work. I'm gonna spin this backward. So again, we have pins. You should be able to see this. One, two, and three. And then this ground. So you can hook this ground up to pin one if you want. Um, I would say most people don't. But in some scenarios where you have um, ungrounded equipment, you might want to. I'm going to mark pin one with black because this gets confusing real quick. Mm. 
now I know where pin one is. And I can start my connections. So pin two hot. For me, hot in this pair is going to be white. And cold is going to be blue. Hot, cold, shield, ground. I'm going to start with pin two, hot. So it does help to tin the wires sometimes first. So I'm going to do that down here out of the way. Now, since I don't have a great way to hold this wire up in front of the camera, I am going to tin these so that they won't take much solder when I come back around with the cable with the, with the wires. Casey asks, um, "What does what's the benefit of star quad?" and the benefit of star quad is really um, the idea behind normal two conductor wiring is that you have two cables, hot and cold, red and blue, carrying a positive signal and a negative signal across a long distance, sometimes, you know, uh, 500 feet or more. Um, so if you use an unbalanced connection, you only have one signal going through, and that's hot. By the time it gets all the way to the other end, it's going to pick up a ton of interference. In fact, both cables will. However, on a two-conductor cable, the hot cable is 180 degrees out of phase with the cold cable. So it's essentially the same signal doubled in exact opposite phase of each other. So that by the time they both get to the other end of the cable, they, inside the equipment, are reconnected. Um, the signals are reconnected. And they reject all of the interference that is picked up by the cable because these pairs are twisted inside around each other. That's called common mode rejection. So the idea is if these two cables nearly share the same space along their path, um, the closer they are together, the better they are at rejecting signal. So with a star quad cable, what you're getting is one cable on each side of itself. So let me quickly show you this, the other end of this. You see this little star? It's even better at rejecting noise than a regular two conductor cable because they're they're virtually occupying the same space in that 180 degrees phase relationship. So I've owned star quad cables for years. I've never had any problems with interference. Um, 
they might be overkill for some applications, but um, I really have been uh, sold on them since I've since I've owned Star Quad cables. I've had microphone cables that do allow interference in, and um, once you once you get to a certain point of um, cabling, it's really hard to go back to those bad cables. All right. Pin too hot. Pin three cold. Go right down in. So since I filled these cups with a little bit of solder and I tinned each joint, um, they're they're soldering up nicely. We don't want this too long, but we want a little bit to go in the cup. that as well because I had such good luck with those other two. This is always the difficult part, getting that shield. So this is an, a great example of why you wouldn't want this entire shield to try to fit inside that little cup. Another alternative would be to actually wrap a tiny solid cable around here and then use that as a pin. I think that's that. Get this action shot. I think we can add a little solder to that. Shield cables tend to suck up a lot of solder, but you don't want them to be like globbed with solder. All right. Am I warmed up? Is my soldering on point yet? Let's get really close. It's pretty good. I think we could touch up both of these with just a, a tiny bit of solder, just to make sure they're really Really solid. The edge ringtone. Pretty sweet. The ringtone, I mean. Okay. Now, let's get back off this zoom action. Go back to normal. We've got our strain relief here as well. This fits right inside the cup. Uh, 
And then when the boot tightens, the strain relief tightens everything in place. All right. That's one side. So I think we've got time for probably one more cable end. Why don't we do a tip ring sleeve end? You saw how to do an XLR connector. Why don't we do a tip ring sleeve connector? So similar here. Hot, cold, ground, tip ring sleeve. ring sleeve so these are pretty shiny I'm gonna say they don't really need any any work from the sponge okay the other end of my cable braille connector first insulator next check our length I've been making these a little too long. I'm going to go a little shorter. Let's see how fast we can do this. That's what's important here. Speed. Not making sure that everybody sees everything. Okay. Operate. Starting from the front. I, I can't say the word tip anymore, I guess, starting from the from the end. Cotton and our tissue pack. So here, this is a good a good example of how you can see the how these wires are kind of occupying the same space and giving a good common mode rejection. That's how they're twisted inside. But you do need to separate them. And hot is going to go up front. Probably need to strip a little more off those actually because they're going to come back a little further. 
strip off plenty from the blue ones though. Oh, excuse me. The white are hot. The white are going to go up front. The blue ones are going to go on the side. So we'll take off. We'll take off plenty of insulation from the blue ones. I had the same set of quad cables for about 15 years and I just I had been talking them up um, to uh, a lot of, a lot of my musician friends and uh, and online a little bit and and then I immediately lost them after that so this particular cable like I said has a really strong insulation. got some long ones, we've got some short ones, and we've got our shield. I'm going to twist this pair because they go together. I'm going to twist this pair because they go together. And then I'm going to do my, my trick. Casey asked a question and then use the internet to answer his own question. And the question was, who invented the tip ring sleeve cable? Thomas Edison, Tom Schultz of Boston, or some other Tom. And the answer, uh, according also to Casey, was patented by some old dude named C.E. Scribner. So, fun fact. Casey's fun facts. Twist, twist, twist. Double twist. We're going to give that a solder. So many frayed wires everywhere. Your desk will not be clean by the end of a cable making session, I promise. that down. I'll save you the extreme close-up, but you get the idea. I shocked it. Again, um, soldering tips. Uh, a big one is getting that iron on both sides of the joint make sure that both sides of the joint get uh, get wet with solder because you don't want a dry solder joint. A dry solder joint will eventually fail. Cut off the thick one. Twist the rest. Now these are pretty tricky solder because there's a lot going on in a very little space. So I'm going to start with the tip. I mean the end. Anytime you can wrap that cable around and get a good electrical connection, 
That's what you want to do. So I tend to hook cabling backward when possible. Okay. Touching the contact and the wire, adding solder, holding it tight, touching up the back side. So you see the, the solder drop through. That's one. Bend this up a little. Get our cold. Going through, making sure that there's no fray wires. So we've got a little extra on here. We're going to trim that. just a straight up drum track that I did for a video. I don't even remember what video. So hook back. Actually I'm gonna hook this kind of up away from the ground joint. Tape that down because my cable is has a memory, bad memory. Doesn't remember the good things I do. Touching both at once if possible. Adding solder. Touching up from the back side if possible. Might not be. Will it shine? I think it will. Let's look. Is it shiny? It is. Is the backside wet? Yes, it is. Are there any frays? I don't really see any. Maybe some little ones. Did I cut this one too short as well? Ooh, pretty close. Okay. Here is the absolute worst part about soldering TRS connectors. You have to get this underneath. We also want to trim it. We don't want too much. That's trimmed. This is going to sit under here. And then there's a little insulator here. Just a piece of cardboard that's been, I think, wrapped in plastic. So we're going to push that up, jam that out of there for now. And then we'll push it back in in a moment. I haven't used my, uh, my hemostats yet. Here's a terrible little song I wrote. On a Yamaha, Yamaha keyboard. Let's straighten this out. Okay. So.
going to tighten my strain relief to make sure that my cable stays in place. And I did make it a little too long. I'm like over three on this. Stray wires, shock my iron. Let's get a closer view here. This is what you came for the music and this, I presume. pretty good. If you do ever end up with some little strays, this is the time to get rid of them. Don't knock your camera over. Whatever you do, All we need to do is push down our insulator and they almost never fit properly, but we just tighten this back up. So this insulator kind of keeps everything separated. So make sure it's nice and flat if possible, especially for the other side. Cable, it's tangled at my feet. Okay. Sleeve, barrel connector, or barrel case. Super annoying connector. Okay, time for the test. Two is hot. Can we seep into? Activity. Pin three for cold. The ring. Conductivity. Pin one for ground. Shield. Conductive. 
Now the ultimate test, is it going to give me any conductivity between any of the other pins and ground? No. And no. All right, you know what comes next. Let me get some room. Fixed. Fixed. All right. Let's see, what time is it? It's nine o'clock. I think that's it, folks. I think we've done it. We've done it again. Next time we do some soldering, we're going to do a like a shorty. We'll do just like the shortest little guy that we can imagine. And uh, that's it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks again, Casey, for the great tunes. Uh, as always, any questions before I go? Any soldering questions? Any questions about how to wrap tape around the end of an XLR connector so that it fits inside a, a desktop stand? Questions about where I got my tools? Questions about how to make an incredible wood pick like this? Seems self-explanatory, but you never know. Oh, uh, solder. Actually, that, that's a great question, KCS. Are you 60, 60, 40? Yes. Um, I do use 60, 40, or 67, or uh, I believe it's 63, 37. So this is um, Kester solder. I buy it by the pound. And... There are a few. There are a few good brands out there. You can always trust uh, Kester solder. Let's see exactly what this is. Does it say? Yeah. So this is the thin, a thin Kester solder. Uh, Od O A T Y E Y is another good brand, and um, this is rosin core solder. So inside this little see if we can find it inside of here maybe if I cut it really carefully you'll be able to see the rosin inside it's filled with a tiny acidic paste um, which is literally yeah so you can kind of see there's a little paste inside there, um, and that is called flux. Flux is important because it cleans your joint as it works. So let me see if we can't get some of the solder out. Yeah, there's the there's the the flux. So that flux is important. It, it cleans the joint and prepares the metals for soldering. And um, I use a, that's rosin core solder. You could also buy rosin in another state, which is like a liquid, uh, a liquid rosin. It's generally not green. A piece of copper fell in here and turned it all green. It's usually kind of an amber color. It's literally just pine tree sap. Um, Rosin is just, a, it's the same thing as like the rosin that you would put on your hands as a gymnast. Very similar. Um, so, yep, 60, essentially 60, 40 rosin core. Uh, a safety note. If you are handling solder like this, if you're working with um, leaded solder, as it's called, uh, make sure you wash your hands before you eat or drink anything. Um, you don't want to ingest solder. Not, not great for you. I'm not a conspiracy theorist necessarily, but uh, there's enough research about lead to know that you just maybe wash your hands if you're gonna if you're gonna touch lead. Um, all right, I think that's it, folks. Thank you for tuning in. We made this a lot of fun tonight. It was a lot of it's a lot of work to make a few cables, but it's worthwhile. It's a it's a great investment. 
that you can be proud of because you made it. And uh, I'm all about that. Thanks, everybody. I will catch you next week. And wait for the social to see what it's going to be. All right. Talk to you all later. Bye.